my question is about uh, the NRA's news conference this afternoon here in Washington. Uh, Wayne LaPierre called on Congress to pass legislation so that an armed, an armed officer is in each school throughout America. There's like 90,000 schools in America, cost about $5 billion. Do any of you think that that's a good idea? Well, <clears throat> I'll just uh, start off maybe on this. Uh, I think it's a, a, an incredibly uh, false notion to think that uh, simply by having armed guards in our schools that somehow that will uh, deter uh, so someone who uh, uh, is, is, is dead on uh, going to try to take not only uh, the lives of other people's, but in this case and other cases themselves as well. Uh, and I think it's just the exact opposite direction the American people want us to move in. They want us to look at this, I think, in this issue holistically. Uh, as it pertains to the issues of uh, guns and, and who has access to them, uh, as well as the mental health issues that we're facing in this country. I think those are, in a holistic way, we look at this in a more uh, rational way. I think the way in which the NRA is approaching this now is irrational. And, and I think the American people understand that. Uh, that we're expecting, I think the people were expecting a, a, a completely different response. And I think what we're looking for from the NRA is a more collaborative approach. What can you bring, what can you talk about today that can help us move the country forward. That was not done today by that press conference. Let me, let me say that uh, I do not believe those remarks uh, represent uh, anywhere near uh, a significant portion of America. Uh, I don't believe, frankly, that they represent necessarily the majority of views of responsible members of the National Rifle Association who want guns to hunt, uh, want guns to protect them, their home and their house, and yes, to our children. But the recommendation of an arms escalation in America is not, I think, the solution that the American people believe uh, is, uh, makes common sense. Uh, I am very hopeful that we will uh, go in a direction which will say uh, that uh, these weapons of uh, uh, mass uh, killing capability uh, will be limited, the magazines will be limited, uh, and that, yes, we will uh, make sure that uh, people who have access to d dangerous weapons, uh, in fact, are mentally healthy to the extent that we can get there. But I do not think that those remarks, uh, which I think were unfortunate, represent uh, even the majority of his own members. I would be surprised if that were the case. Certainly do not represent the views of the overwhelming majority of the American public. I was in the um, funeral service for Senator Inouye when, those rem uh, when uh, uh, Mr. LaPierre made his remarks, so I did not hear fully uh, uh, the context of it, and I will. Uh, but I did hear that he also said one way to stop a bad man with a gun is a good man with a gun. And as, as uh, Lerwood Poyer said, that escalation is, is uh, something that uh, is, not is not a positive force. Uh, we know that this is complicated. We also know... Uh, that 90-some uh, well, percent, high ni percent of people who have been diagnosed or, or have a mental illness do not engage in violent activity. So we're talking about, uh, uh, you know, all of a sudden it's, it's the mentally ill that are responsible for this. No, it isn't. Uh, there, there are some people who, are on, who have impaired judgment and who may be mentally ill, but we're talking about a small percentage of the American people. That doesn't mean that we shouldn't do more to address the issue of mental illness and how we care for it. That's why we passed the mental health parity bill when Patrick Kennedy was here, and that's why we have in the Affordable Care Act parity for, uh, for mental illness there. It's very important. Uh, but for the, uh, for the uh, NRA and others to sort of shield themselves by saying it's the mentally ill or something, and therefore we have to have more armed cops in the schools or more guns in the school. What do they do? Are they going to have them on a teacher's desk? Or wait a minute, wait a minute, man with a gun. I have it locked up someplace. Wait until I go get it. I mean, this is, it just doesn't make sense. We've got to reduce violence. So we've been having a number of meetings about the reduction of violence in our society. The challenge that we have is addressing mental illness and its, uh, and its relationship uh, to every issue. And also the fact that, as, as you know, as we gathered here, over 130 uh, uh, Democrats, at least, are co-sponsors of, a, uh, of, a, um, of legislation to 
uh, to ban the high capacity, what we call uh, assault magazines that enable somebody to have 30 shots uh, instead of 10, which 10 seems like a lot to me, but at least it gives somebody a, a fighting chance. And then to, to look at an assault weapons ban, all these things are, are being considered. That's why I named a person who is a hunter, a Vietnam vet, an injured Vietnam vet, Mike Thompson, to sort of coordinate, channel the energy uh, of our caucus. That's why we met with a, a youth violence community the other night under the leadership of Bobby Scott uh, to hear what some of the concerns are. But you know what it all kept coming back to? We understand the issues of mental health. We understand about youth violence and the rest. But you've got to get rid of these high performance guns. You just, uh, 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 magazines, uh, whatever you call them. I called them a clip once and they told me that I didn't know what I was talking about. It was a magazine. So whatever you want to call it, uh, uh, they're, they're very, very dangerous. This has been a Sunfish production.